it would be relatively easy for a school, for a college, to decide to do their own thing and to maintain things manually. Uh, but it's my view that if you're going to try and run any of these kinds of services on an institutional basis, you need to automate the, the administration behind them so that you're not trying to keep all the accounts up to date manually. It, it just becomes, it, it, it's not manageable. So one of the things that we have put a lot of effort into is to linking up uh, the creation of the user accounts and pre-populating the gateways within Pebblepad with course related information. So that's all coming from our central identity management system and our, our registry information system so that all that side of creating accounts and managing who's in which gateways, it's all done by some sort of black magic in the background. But it's critical and that's the key part to making an institutional application work. It's what makes the difference between a, a local installation to making something that is truly institution-wide. It's tying in with those central systems and that means that having a central team is critical. Students and staff don't have to do anything. Uh, it is available to everybody. It's available to everybody as a default. For students, Pebblepad is there automatically in their University of Edinburgh portal. It's there available to them. and They just have to click on the button and go and explore. Uh, for staff, they can add the channel as an option. It's not pushed out to staff in quite the same way. Uh, everybody can, of course, move it about if they want to. But some students will then be directed by their course teams to use Pebblepad in a particular way. Other students can just find out about it. They can come along to some of the open sessions that we run, these kinds of things. But it's not forced on anybody. Nothing is forced on anybody. The key thing that I have learnt through the evaluations we've done so far is that we need to work a little harder with our teaching staff to help them appreciate the range of things that Pebblepad can do. Our staff tell us that they're very keen on encouraging reflection in the students. They don't immediately see that Pebblepad is a tool that can do that. The, there is a, a view in some places that it, it's an e-portfolio, it's somewhere that you put stuff and, and they haven't necessarily become aware of the, the opportunities to use it to really prompt reflection and, and some of the tools that are in there to, to help students think more reflectively. Uh, so I was surprised that it, it, it's obvious to me that Pebblepad does these things and it clearly isn't obvious to other people so we need to work harder. The, the message that I've learned from that is that as an educational developer we need to work harder on helping other people see some of the opportunities and then they can decide whether it's for them in their situation or not. We've gone to the college learning, to college learning and teaching committees in humanities and social sciences and science and engineering. The College of Medicine and Veterinary Medicine is a little different in its structures and, and the way it works and the external drivers. Uh, so we've gone to the college learning and teaching committees and we're trying to explain to the staff on those committees some of the wider potential of Pebble Part. And we see that as being, if, if we can get those committees interested in doing something at college level that's got a strategic push. So that's one route we're going. That tends to be quite a slow route because it takes a little while for people just to think about it. They don't want to dash into something, commit to something if it's not going to be well thought through and a sensible thing to do. So we're doing things through the, th through the committee structure of the university. The process, is slow. I expected that. I was around when we started rolling out a VLE as an institutional tool and the process of implementing the portfolio is very similar and the speed is very similar. At the outset when we first talked about the VLE people kind of looked at us and said well why, why would we want one of those we're perfectly happy doing things with our whiteboards and the odd HTML page here and there. Why? What, what's a VLE going to give us? In, in many ways, we're getting a, a broadly similar reaction to the e-portfolio. And take up in the VLE was slow, steady, a few nice examples. We've then been able to roll that out and extend it. And I see exactly the same pattern coming on again with the e-portfolio. A little bit of reluctance. It's a new tool. People can't be bothered 
we're managing okay at the moment, thank you very much. But as we get better and better examples, we can share that with other people and demand will build and use will grow and expand. I, I think it's got tremendous potential. I do think it's the right way to go. When, when we first spoke about e-portfolios, there was a tendency to compare it with an art portfolio, which is a very static object that you can carry about with you. There was a tendency to say it's a digital one of those. I think that was a, a mistake and we shouldn't have done it that way, that we should have put the emphasis on the potential of these things for promoting reflection. Uh, so we need to highlight some of those tools more specifically and we need to go back to things like our graduate attributes and the way that we've built uh, a self-assessment tool into the e-portfolio to let the students look at the different graduate attributes that we'd like to see them leave the university with and show them the path that that takes to resources that they can use to help them and that they can do it at different stages it's not just to do it once it's a it's a keep revisiting it it's a, there's there's an ongoing cycle in there that we need to try and build into some of the processes i would drop the e-portfolio tag altogether i would never mention e-portfolio i would i would characterize this thing in a, in a completely different way and I think that would open different doors more quickly. So I would say that it's all about reflective learning and it's a personal learning space for the students and, and, and that, that would be my starting point. So that would be one thing that I would do differently. Where schools or course teams have really thought about it and really decided that a portfolio is a sensible tool in their context uh, the take-up has been very, very good and the feedback from the students in those situations has been good. So it's about having the right tool for the right purpose. So that, that's been very successful.